To be back here in Shanghai, I love this city and I love what's happening in our industry and in this room today. I've had the chance to meet with many of you here today at Lendit here in China, in your many visits to our Prosper offices in San Francisco, and our hundreds and thousands of WeChats back and forth together. And as Peter said, this is my passion, this is my hobby. It's for me so much more of a job than a job in everything that we're doing together. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Ron Suber, and you see my name translated in Chinese as Old Wise Uncle. And what I would like to do is share some of my experiences with you, and some of my observations in my travels, in my operating experience at Prosper. We've had a great week here in China. We've been all over the place on CNBC in Hong Kong, at Ant Financial, at Alibaba, really learning and sharing and exchanging ideas. And we're looking forward to doing that throughout this conference as well. I've literally traveled the world, given 50 speeches already this year, all around, about this secular generational change. And what I know for sure today, it's even bigger than you think. The way we move money, the way we save, the way we invest, the way we lend, and the way we borrow. In consumer lending, in student lending, in business lending, and mortgages, it's all changing. And we in this room, we in this industry, are those innovators and those pioneers. It's so exciting, but it's so difficult at the same time. And what's fascinating as I travel, as Sol mentioned earlier and some of the other speakers, it's called so many different things, but it shares so many common characteristics which I'd like to review with you today and share with you some very important things, four things in particular, that we should take together as a group in the year ahead. So what are we? What is FinTech? It's this. We're really finance companies, and they're using technology and data in a different way. And we're offering these new products and services, some O to O to O, some offline, some offline to online, but in a very different way. But we're really helping people, and that's what I think a lot of people forget, is the good that we're doing. Giving people the credit they deserve, lowering the rates that they're getting today, or giving them credit they're not getting at all. And at the same time, we're giving people and institutions an opportunity to earn yield on their money in this low interest rate, negative interest rate environment around the world. What are marketplace lenders? Online marketplaces for credit, like Prosper. We're really platforms that take these super prime and prime credit-worthy borrowers, and we connect them to investors without a balance sheet, like Uber connecting drivers and passengers but not only cars, and Airbnb connecting people to places to stay without owning one place, one hotel, one apartment. What are the key components of FinTech and online marketplaces for credit? It's this, we are growth companies. We saw some staggering numbers on the screens today, and in companies we visited, nobody is growing like we are together. We are big, data, machine learning, analytical companies. It's not just about gathering data. Anybody can do that, right? The big banks can do that. But it's what we do with this data and the analytics and the tagging and the history and what we learn from the people and machines once we get the data. And it's our marketing expertise. It's our ability to go offline, to go online, to use social media, to use Facebook, to use Baidu, and all of that to find these people, these businesses, these institutions, these students, and the real estate. And for me, I think this is actually the secret, the secret sauce of what we do. It's what everybody asks me when they come to Prosper. Tell us the underwriting. How do you do pricing, credit, risk, underwriting, collection, servicing, and asset sale? It's like the Coca-Cola secret formula for each of us is this piece. But it's really the combination of our marketing, us finding the businesses, finding the consumers, doing the underwriting, and funding it, the liability side of our businesses. That could be people peer-to-peer. -peer. It could be balance sheet. It could
could be institutions, it could be banks, and securitization, which is one of the answers that we must all come to understand. How important securitization is going to be for our industry, marketplace lending and fintech, to fund this growth. Very important. And finally, it's people. It's us. It's hiring the right people from the technology companies, from the banking companies, from Wall Street, from Silicon Valley, from the best schools, and helping them understand the passion and the dream and the opportunity they have. Because without this, we will not make it. We will not scale to this enormous opportunity. At Prosper, we use something called Prosper Daily. We've seen your Rendai's tool and some of the other platforms. My children don't have computers. They don't carry money. They don't go to banks. They're all on their mobile devices, like so many people around the world. And we as an industry, as FinTech, and online marketplaces for credit, need this. We need the data, and we need engagement. We need people to look at us every day, even though they may just borrow or lend or invest once a week or once a month. In spite of all this press, we are performing in the United States, if you look at the marketplace lenders, the super prime prime, Year prime. For the year period, for the 12 months, almost 6% net on a season portfolio. And that compares so well to equity and fixed income and other things wealth managers have introduced them to. And for me, what I'm most proud of, in addition to the good things we're doing, is that we're still performing. We're still finding the right businesses and people. We're still doing the credit the right way. And we're funding it in a way that produces the short duration yield that everybody is still looking for around the world, people and institutions. So we have common goals, and they change. But they've really not changed from last year to this year. Our shared goals are still this. We are changing how people invest and borrow and spend. And we're providing this cost-efficient access to capital like never before. These people and institutions now have a way to engage with each other. We used to call it the sharing economy when we shared music or shared pictures. But now what we're doing in this room is we're part of this access economy, allowing people to access each other without an intermediary. And that's what Bitcoin and these other protocols are doing. It's connecting people like never before. And we're part of that process too. And our other common goal, is we're providing simple and quick and easy ways for people to connect and get these risk-adjusted assets. So this is a popular picture in the United States. It's what we call the three-legged stool. And every platform has three legs. For Uber, it's a car, it's a passenger, and it's everything Uber does in the middle. It's the middle leg. For Prosper, it's super prime borrowers, it's capital, retail and institutional, and the middle leg is everything that we do inside marketing, accounting, risk, technology, etc. In the U.S., the left leg is a little short. It's a little bent. It's a little broken. For the first time in my four years in our industry, we have more borrowers than investors. And we are fixing this. We are rebuilding this. So you have seen a pullback in North America across many of the marketplace lenders. A little bit here. We saw some flat charts instead of growing every quarter. But we're fixing that. We must make sure that these three legs stay in balance and in the same size and in equilibrium through economic changes, interest rates, employment, unemployment. When unemployment goes up, defaults go up. This is our correlation. So we must change rates and make sure that those rates make sense in all of these environments. My biggest fear is that we have an information security breach amongst one of us. And then borrowers and investors don't want to give us that information. So for me, this is something that is a challenge. And we will have platform failures. We have had them in the Middle East, in Europe, in North America, and here. It will continue. And we must keep best practices and trust and transparency to make sure we limit the frauds and limit the failures. So let's take a quick look. How did we do since I was here one year ago at Lend of China? All we talked about was grow, grow, grow. We talked about OPM. 
It's not other people's money. It was originations per month. We were all just comparing the month. It was all about growth. It was about who could raise money, equity capital. Who could become a unicorn first, or the biggest unicorn? You really don't hear this as much in our industry. In the third quarter, we started to really realize the importance of working with banks. Banks were investing in us, banks were buying our loans, banks were leveraging us, taking us public, doing securitizations. They were actually our friends, not our enemies. And we focused on efficiency, on cost per acquisition, and conversion of a listing to a uh, origination. And we focused on product expansion, bigger loans, smaller loans, healthcare loans, all kind of new things. In the third quarter, we were really starting to focus as an industry around the world on how do we make these things profitable? How do we get the unit economics to work? How do we scale and get to scale? Because we started to see the public valuations decline or get volatile. And then we started to see this failure. In the first quarter, we saw that left leg get a little short. We saw funding pressure as the interest rates rose in the U.S. in December, the banks raised their cost of funding, securitization spreads widen, and we saw this press skepticism. And then it got really skeptical. We, there wasn't a day where you couldn't see some writer from some publication poking, and criticizing, and wondering if we were here to stay. Were we a fad? Or were we a megatrend? And that's our opportunity, that's our challenge, is to raise rates when necessary. When we raise rates, it's supposed to happen. That's what marketplaces do to stay in equilibrium. We made it through all of that stock market and bond market, global volatility, and we had to scale back. And you will see us scale back up to bigger than before. And in spite of all of that happening, the asset continues to perform. This is a picture from the Orchard Index. You can see, on an aggregated basis, the way they do it, that the U.S. consumer market is really still performing, again, every single month. So I took a poll in the U.S., and I've been taking a poll all week here in China. And I said to people, I asked people, what's the one thing that's more clear to you today than it was when we were together a year ago? And this is what people said, that that pricing, credit, underwriting risk is still the most important thing more important than your brand, perhaps even more important than your technology. Because if the price is wrong, if the risk is wrong, you're out. The borrowers don't come, and neither does the money. No doubt about it that China is so much bigger than many people knew. But for me, the thing I know for sure that I really wasn't as sure about a year ago, it's not just about growth. It's not just about origination. It's about building these companies that last. We are building 100-year franchises. We're building global brands. And we must keep the legs of the stool the same in equilibrium. Not too many borrowers, not too many investors in equilibrium. So what are the four things I'd like to leave you with today? Things that we think about at Prosper, things that some of my associates have been talking about. We have people here from India, UK, and South America, and North America, all traveling. And these are things we've been talking about as we go around the world. The first one is we need to perform through the cycle. We need to make sure that this asset class doesn't go negative, doesn't go too high, that we stay consistent and positive. And we do this by focusing on credit and operational efficiency and equilibrium and underwriting and collections and asset sales. It's okay to raise rates. It's what's supposed to happen. If we do it, we get criticized. And if we don't, we get criticized. But this is key, is performance. The second one, we're not an alternative investment. We're a fixed income investment. And we need to figure out how to put new doors and new windows on our marketplaces, on our fintech platform, so that it's easy for people to own the product that we're producing. They could be listed vehicles or other kind of securitizations or investors where there's permanent capital. And I think when we meet in a year, you will see so many new ways for people to access the product that we're producing, whether it's a student loan, consumer loan, business loan. And trusted global brands. Boy, oh boy, did we learn as an industry how important it is that we have trust and transparency, that we do the things we say we're going to do. 
and that we do them in a fashion that everybody wants us to do it, the regulators, our investors, the borrowers, and the capital, cannot enforce enough the need for us from here to be trustworthy, to be transparent. And this one is something that there is no doubt in my mind. We need an ecosystem like Apple has the Apple Store. We must be open. And for me, the ecosystem are companies like Orchard, who you're going to hear from today, and Peer IQ, because they're going to connect all of us and be this independent data visualization to make sure that we can say we have third parties who connect us, who make sure what we do is what we say, and make it even easier for that left leg to be bigger and grow, so investors trust us and see it. This is a global opportunity, and it starts and stops with this. We must understand each other, our culture, our product, communicate, invest together, and cooperate. Provide access and engagement, and distribution, and respect. So I've been doing this now for almost four years. I've never been more excited, and I look forward to spending the rest of the time.